Lesson 9, Error Handling Part 1, Error Handling with the Tri-Catch When you develop TSQL code, you need to take into consideration situations in which your code might fail. SQL Server provides you with tools to handle errors and take corrective measures. SQL Server supports the try-catch construct. To use it, you place the suspect code in a begin try, end try block, followed by a begin catch, end catch block. When an error is encountered in the try block, the error is trapped, and control is passed to the corresponding catch block, where you have your error handling code. If you trap an error, no error message will be generated and sent to the caller. If you want to throw an error to the caller, you can do so using the razor command. If no error was generated in the try block, the catch block is skipped. To demonstrate using the try-catch construct, first run the following code, which creates the employees table. Implementing error handling with the try-catch construct has many advantages over implementing error handling without this construct. With this construct the code is more structured and elegant. All errors are trappable, except for errors with a severity level of 20 and up, for example hardware failures. And you also have a set of useful and convenient functions available in the catch block. The first time you run it, the insert statement raised no error, so the print statement following it produced the output insert succeeded. The catch block was skipped in this case. The second time you ran the code. The insert failed on a primary key violation and control was passed to the catch block. The catch block in this case simply printed the output insert failed. Part 2, Error Handling Functions The information you get back about the error itself is limited only to the error number. When you use the try-catch construct, the following functions are available in the catch block, error number, error message, error severity, error state, error line, error procedure.
the catch block examines the return value of the error number function to determine a course of action. It then just prints the values from the different functions to return information about the error. To demonstrate the use of these functions, run the code. The code inserts a valid row into the employees table and should not generate an error. Next, run the code again. It causes a primary key violation error, of course, producing the following output. Similarly, you can try different errors by specifying 0, A null in the input column, as suggested in the comment following the insert statement. Part 3, using exact state. When you're not using the try-catch construct and an error happens in an explicit transaction, your session can end up in one of two possible transaction states active and committable transaction, or no open transaction. When you deuce try catch, your session can end up in a third transaction state called failed, also informally referred to as doomed. In this state, the transaction is open, still holding all locks, but it is uncommittable, that is, the transaction cannot submit any code that causes writes to the transaction log. In other words, the transaction cannot modify data. Rather, it can only read data. Before you apply any modification, you have to first roll back the failed transaction. Exact state is a function that you invoke in the catch block to get the current transaction state. It returns 0 for no active transaction, 1 for active and committable, and minus 1 for active but uncommittable. The first time you run the code, there should be no errors. Run the code a second time, and you will get the error. Because a primary key violation is not considered a severe error, it neither completely terminates nor fails the transaction. To see an example where the transaction fails, you can simply set Zact abort to on, and rerun the code. Do you want to learn new skills in the fastest and most effective way? Visit Learn with Video Tutorials.com